Hey coders and welcome to episode 4 of our form service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In these next couple of videos we're going to be diving in a bit deeper into all of the different types of items that you can use in your forms, starting out in this video with the layout items. So the layout items are actually a bit of a peculiar bunch of items and the reason why I say that is these items actually don't collect any data themselves. They are more provided just as a context for the rest of the items that you ask. So again, they all have their own different box that you can include within your form. However, there is no input that, there's no data that you can input into these item types. However, we have four different classifications for the layout types and they are page break, section header, image, and video. And I've provided a quick diagram of each of these. However, we're going to be looking in a little bit deeper into all of these items in the code later on. So the top seven methods I have for you today are as insert type here item. And when I say insert type here, I mean if you wanted to convert your item into a uh, page break, you can say as page break item. Or if you want to convert into an image, you can say as image item. So again, there's a lot of different uh, types that you can typecast into, and this is the method to do that. Likewise, we have as insert type here item. So again, you could say as or you could say add video item, that would work perfectly fine. Uh, we have uh, our third method, which is set to go page. We also have set image, set alignment, set width, and finally set, UR, or set video URL. So this is a lot to cover, so let's go quickly over into the code so that we can get started right away. For clarity, I'm going and simplifying our form just a bit, so let's take a quick look at what we have right now. We still have our title and the description, and now we have this image item right here. So this is what an image item looks like. Again, there's no questions that's asking, it's just the image itself. Great, so now let's say that we wanted to get a reference to this image right here, and let's say we wanted to change, say, the width of this image. Well, we would go into our code editor, and I'm actually getting the reference right here. So here is our image item right here. It says form dot get in dot get item by ID. We've seen this before. Now let's say item or image item dot, and if we say try to say set width, we can see that there is no method for this item that says set width. And why is that? Well, that is because when we're just getting this item, we are only getting the item as a generic interface of item. And we and when we have just that generic interface, we can't access specific methods for say an image item. So to do that, we need to first convert our generic item into a more specific image item. And the way to do that is to say as image item. And as you can see, we have lots of different items that we can type cast into. But since we're trying to uh, convert it into an image item, let's use this one right here as image item. Great. So now that we have it as an image item, we can now access say dot set width and that is totally fine right here. Great, so that is the as image item uh, uh, method. And then again, as you saw, we can also do other things like as date item or as multiple choice item, as list item, all of those are going to be just fine. Great, so that is again how to typecast from a generic, uh, from a generic item interface into a more specific class like an image item. Now let's look at our next method, which is add. And then again, we can insert any type we want to. Uh, we can say add checkbox item or add duration item. The one that we're going to look at right now is add section header item. And what and what a section header or what a section header item is is basically it's just going to give us like another box that kind of looks like this one actually, but it's just reference material. It's just contextual information. So let's actually uh, give it a title. So now we have a section header, we have a section header item, and now let's say set title. And we'll just set it to simply my section header item. Great, so now if we save it and we run it, we can see that we have a section 
header item. And as you can tell, there are no questions that are being asked or anything. It's just basically a text box within our form. Great, so that is the add, ins that is the add section header item uh, method. And again, we can add any type of item that we want to using this uh, method right here. And then that is already typecasted into whatever specific item type you want. In this instance, it's the section header. So we don't need to do any additional typecasting like right here. All right, so let me just comment that out and let's take a look at our next method, which is going to be a set go to page. So I want to take a little bit more time with this, um, with this method. So what this is, this is a method on the uh, page break item itself. So let me just uncomment these lines of code right here. So a page break is basically, uh, if you go back into the form, as you can tell, everything is on just one page, right? If we preview it, um, everything is on one page and then after completed with the form, you can hit submit. So actually, let me give you a demonstration of what pages are like. So if we hit save and then we hit the run button, It'll run. All right, so now let's go back into our form right here. So this is the form that people will see, right? Here is our normal form, and then we have different sections, right? Here is the form that our users will see. And as you can tell, we have our first page right here. If we hit the next button, it'll go on to page two now. We're gonna add additional questions. So we hit the next button, it'll go on to page three. Next one, it'll go on to page four. And then since this is the last page, we can hit submit and then all of our data will be uh, submitted at the same time. So this is just a way to, um, I guess, segregate different um, pages so that we can organize them a little bit better. Um, so that is how the normal progression works. We go from page one to page two to page three uh, and then just sequentially on all of the different pages. All right, but let's say now that we have, actually, let me just get rid of these pages or these sections real quick, just so that we can clear our slate again. All right, so now we're back to one page again, and let me just refresh that. So let's say that uh, we can actually, um, let's say that we wanted after page two to go directly to page four. So we can actually navigate them. We can control the navigation across different pages. And the way to do that is to use the method uh, uh, go to page. So let's say on page two, we're going to access page two, right? And then we'll, we're going to say now set go to page. And there's two different uh, options for this. We have two uh, different um, uh, parameters that we can put in. We can either put in a page break item or we can put in a page navigation type. So let's just try out the page break item right now. So what this is, is basically we are going to put in a uh, page break item basically right in here. So if we say page four, all right, and then we now save this and we run it. Then if we go back into our form and we hit refresh, then we are on page one right now, right? So if we go next, then instantaneously we are on page four. So we went from page one right to page four. And that is because again, we added a page break item to our form. And then we were saying, all right, where, wherever that page break is, we, where, uh, we are actually gonna go right to page four uh, on that page break. So again, here is, here is it in the editor. We have, after section one, we are going straight to section four, page four. So that's just a way to navigate a little bit easier or with a little bit more control, at least, uh, through the different pages. All right, so then let's take a quick look at our other set go-to page, and that is going to be uh, a page navigation type. So this is actually an enum, so you need to access it through the form app. So we'll say form app dot page navigation type, and then we have four different options. Continue is the default, so that is one page after another. Go to pages works just like how we had it before, where you can specify a different page. Restart is basically we're restarting at the uh, first page again, and then submit is after this page or after this uh, after this page break, we are basically going to submit right away. So let me just uh, run this real quick. Uh, so that you can see it. Let me just delete all these again. 
really quickly. All right, so if we now hit the save button and we hit the run button, then we should see that again, after this section right here, we're going to submit the form immediately. And if we take a look at our form, we can see that again, we do not have the, the ability to go to the different pages after this, after this first page break, we are going to submit immediately. So that is what set go to pages. Again, it just lets you control the navigation through your forms a little bit easier. All right, let's go on to the next method and that is set image. So once you have your form, and actually let me delete all these real quick. Delete, delete, and finally delete. So again, we're back to our original form. All right, so once you have that form, you can actually add an image. So to do that, we need to first um, add an image item. So here it's going to add an image item, and now we can set the image of that uh, item. So to do that, we need a blob source, as you can see right here. So I have gone, I have gone through the internet, right through right here. So the URL fetch app, which we're going to explore in a later playlist. And then I've gotten the blob of this image right here. And I have that in a blob object right there. So I'm going to say image blob. And now if I hit save and I hit run, we can see that if we look into our, um, our form, if I hit the refresh button, here we go. Here is the image uh, and it's been inserted right into our form. So that is pretty dang cool. So here is the set image method in action. All right, so now let's look at a, another method. And actually, let me do that same thing, but I'm now going to set the alignment of that image. So actually, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to tell too well, but uh, let's just do it anyway. So the alignment is actually going to be another form app enum. And it's going to be form app dot, um, here we go, alignment. And, and then it's going to be either center, left, or right. So let's just pick center. And you know what, actually while I'm at it, let's go on to the next method as well, which is set width, just so that we can uh, see this uh, set alignment method actually working. So let's say set width, and this is going to be the width in pixels. So if, let's say that we just wanted 100 pixels uh, wide, we can do that, and then we'll hit save. And now let's hit run once again. So it's running the function, it ran successfully. If we go back into our form now, we can refresh the page and here is that same image. However, it has shrunk to just 100 pixels wide. And, and by the way, we are centering the image just as how we specified it right here. Great, so the last one that I want to, the last method that I want to cover for this video before we wrap up is the set video URL. So if you wanted to add a video, to your form, you can do that as easily as saying first add video item. And then now that we have a video item, we can say set video URL. And by the way, this has to be a YouTube URL. Uh, that's just the way that we have it so far. That's the way that AppScript has it so far. And it can be a URL or it can just be the uh, ID of that uh, video, which by the way is right here in the URL. But I've just gone and grabbed that entire URL just for complete, um, uh, just for completeness. All right, so now if we hit the save button and we hit the run button, let's go check out our form one last time. And there it is. Here is a great video that I would recommend everyone to watch on YouTube, but here it is right in our form and we did it all programmatically. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoy and learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you in the very next episode.